Hey, what's up, guys? Today we'll be drawing Baruto from the anime Baruto in Photoshop. Please click, click on the info card now if you just wish to see the speed drawing video. But in this short video tutorial, I'll be going over the details step by step of how to create this Baruto drawing from start to finish. Feel free to check out the video chapters in the description below to preview all the steps or to skip to the chapter that interests you the most. And if you already love the completed drawing you see here and would like to support my channel, please like and subscribe. Now to briefly go over all the steps, we're going to begin by drawing a rough sketch. And then we find the sketch with details. And then trace over the sketch for clean line work. And then we're going to color it and finally thicken the profile lines to complete the drawing. I'll be speed drawing throughout the video, so if you're drawing along, feel free to pause the video whenever you like to catch up with me. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, now before we start our design, let's take a look at some reference pictures of Baruto and find out what features and characteristics we can use to create our design. So from the official manga, I weren't able to find too many references, like this guy literally, like the grown-up version of Baruto. It's only on like the first couple of pages of the manga. I was able to find this from the anime, but I mean, we have enough. You know, we know what he looks like, like the details on him, uh, the clothing's on him, the colors on him, uh, you know, uh, the scar, the weapon. So I think, I think we, we have enough. Plus, uh, there's plenty of references for him. Uh, in this younger, uh, uh, in this younger stage of what he looks like when he's younger. Okay, so I downloaded all the manga covers uh, and kind of studied how uh, Baruto is drawn, uh, how Baruto is drawn when he's young. Okay, and how the artist uh, renders the clothing folds and anatomy and whatnot. Okay, uh, so I think we have enough. And plus, uh, we did a Naruto drawing before. Now, if you read the manga and you're kind of familiar with it, like uh, Baruto's design is pretty much like an alternative design of Naruto. So if you can draw Naruto pretty well, you can probably draw, draw uh, Baruto pretty well. Okay, uh, so make sure you check out that video, uh, how to draw Naruto, and uh, do a quick study of Naruto before you start on this project, Baruto. Okay, so. After setting all these references, I'm going to drag it all to the side, okay? And then I'm going to start with a fresh piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to drag all these to the side. And then start with a fresh piece of paper in Photoshop. Now, if this is your first time drawing in Photoshop, uh, I would recommend watching my video, How to Draw in Photoshop for Beginners, okay? And uh, I'm going to draw a very neutral pose of Baruto, okay? And just kind of uh, do a quick study of what his outfit looks like, what his, uh, uh, his proportion looks like, okay? And from there, I will start a brand new drawing, but put him in a very cool pose, okay? So let's draw. Okay, so I know this looks very rough, very simple, simplistic, and uh, that is because that's what it meant to be. Okay, so a very quick study of, of uh, what Baruta wears and all the features and characteristics on his body. Okay, so you see that uh, he has like a like a cape. Okay, so and the cape is not like a long cape. The cape is only uh, two like his hips, okay? That's how long the cape is. Uh, the cape is buttoned in the front, okay? And then he's wearing like a kind of like a tattered jacket, you know, okay? See how we're at the wrist, it's all tattered. And then has some uh, red band details uh, on the uh, arms, okay? Inside he's wearing kind of like a, like, I think it's like a kind of like a V-neck because he, he, he wears a V-neck uh, when he, he's, he was young, okay? So I would assume that this is probably a V-neck. Uh, and then inside that V-neck, uh, I bet there's a necklace that, looks, that he still wears, that small necklace right here. I, I bet he still has it underneath it, okay? So. But that's pretty much a V-neck shirt that's tattered at the bottom. You can see it from here. Okay, you can see it from here. And then uh, the belt, uh, it might show, it might not show, depending on what pose we put it in. Okay, see the belt right here. Um, and then let's see what else is, it's, uh, what else he's about. Okay, so he has pants. The pants is not uh, full length. It's, it's kind of like 70%. See, it's uh, a little bit below the knee. Okay, got some red band design. Okay, and then uh, kind of like a boot, like a ninja boot. Uh, has a belt kind of hanging right here. And a ninja sword. Okay, so now we kind of did a quick study of him uh, in a very neutral, a uh, very uh, uh, rough uh, stick figure almost uh, uh, kind of study. Okay, so now uh, we can, we're ready to put him in a really cool pose and really make him look like a Baruto. Okay, so we're going to do our uh, basic shapes and forms, starting with, uh, stick uh, starting with stick figuring and then form figuring and then uh, curl figuring. Okay, so I'm going to put him in a cool pose in the stick figure first. All right, let's draw. Put all these references aside. Now remember, uh, when I draw, I'm constantly looking at these references on the side uh, to remind myself what, what, what Baruto looks like. So I'm going to start a new document, and uh, this, this study, this study, I'm going to put it to the side. And I'm going to create a new document in Photoshop, Control-Shift-N. Oh, no, sorry, Control-N. Okay, new document. I'm going to do art uh, print, uh, 11 by 17, and uh, 600 DPI. Create. There we go. Okay, create a new layer, Control-Shift-N. I'm going to call this new layer, uh, stick figure. All right, let's uh, come up with a cool pose. Okay, so I did a quick stick figure of the uh, kind of pose that I want him to, to be in. You know, this hand is uh, holding the sword, okay, and the other hand is holding kind of like a like a ninja uh, ninja hand gesture. Okay, so next, uh, let's go to a uh, form figure. So I'm going to start adding form to this, and I will just I'll turn the opacity down. Okay, and then I create a new figure, a uh, new, new layer, control shift N, and call this form figure. Let's draw. Okay, so now we have uh, a f like the basic form of the character. Uh, next, I'm going to create a layer uh, called Clo Figuring. Control Shift N, and then Clo. 
Okay. Okay. So at this on this layer, it's uh, this is a layer I'm going to define the vast majority of the of the shapes, uh, including like mark mark out where like the vest is, uh, like how long the pants are, uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust the layer for form figuring a little bit lighter. So uh, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my click on my clothes figuring uh, layer and uh, start defining the clothes figure. Let's draw. Okay, so I'm done with my clothes figuring. So pretty much you see like how I roughed in, like pretty much like where his cape is, like uh, his jacket, uh, his uh, pants, and uh, ninja boots. Uh, pretty much all the details that I can find. Oh, oops, I missed something. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> so this is like his belt. It's just hanging right there. Yep. Okay, so his belt's probably hidden somewhere inside here. Okay, but it's covered by the shirt. Okay, um, so I think that's pretty much all the details. Um, yep, okay. So what I want to do is uh, turn this layer lighter, clothes figure lighter. I turn my form figure even lighter. Let me start seeing everything better. Okay. Okay, stick figure even lighter. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna just drag this cape out a little bit more. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm gonna probably make the feet a little bit bigger. So right now I'm using the lasso tool uh, to make uh, selections of areas, move it around, scale it, whatnot. So uh, check out my video, uh, 10 tips uh, for drawing in Photoshop, and uh, you'll be able to find out like exactly how to do it. Okay, but it's very easy. It's just using like the, uh, the the tools in Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, okay, so I'm going to control shift N, a new, new layer. So I'll call this refined drawing. Okay, and now I'm actually going to uh, choose a brush that is smaller. Uh, so. Right now I'm using a uh, 60 brush size, and I'm probably going to go to like 30. Okay, so I'll start working on fine details. Um, now I like to do an image, and then image rotation uh, for the horizontal, and work from this other uh, perspective. Okay, and see if there's anything that is wrong. I can fix it, and then flip it back. So it's very, easy. it's a lot easier to catch mistakes. Okay, when, when, when you do it, and sometimes you know I probably will stay. I might stay in this uh, this or, uh, 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 this orientation. You know, I, I like to flip. You know, maybe you never know. You might some find some happy surprises. Okay, happy accidents. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to start my refine drawing now. Okay, so let's draw. Okay, um, so now that we have a refined drawing of uh, Baruto, so I'm going to uh, put everything. So uh, something I wanted to talk about. So notice, like I broke up like the refined drawing into face and body, because the face is uh, it's really really hard to get right, uh, because you want uh, to capture the essence of the character. And if you uh, look at all the reference pictures of like a certain character, for example Baruto, you're gonna find like uh, that all these pictures, like he looks a little bit different in every a single uh, drawing. Like you're not gonna find him looking exactly the same, okay? There's always a little bit different in each drawing. So, but the artist was able to capture the essence of the character, so that every single time that character will look like that character. So I was trying to do that here with uh, my Boruto. As I look at uh, many like of the manga scenes, you know, like uh, uh, let me show you. For example, like this uh, scene in the manga and uh, this scene in anime. It's like the same scene, <laughs> but they look like totally different. But you can still tell that's Boruto. That's Boruto. So what I'm talking about, I'm trying to capture the essence of the character. And that is, that's mainly going to be carried out on the face and the facial expressions. Uh, so that is why I created a separate layer just for the face, because uh, I spent a lot of time on layer. I, I think I spent like 20 minutes alone just on a layer, uh, just on the face, uh, to, to try to get that face looking right. And then you know, the body is it's on its own layer, piece of cake. And then uh, uh, you also see me like uh, resize a lot of the elements on, on the drawing. Uh, like for example, like I will grab the lasso tool, and then like let's say like I will grab the grab the lasso tool, okay, and I will, hmm. yeah, there you go. So I will grab like a part of the body, and then do a control T, uh, free transform, and adjust it like here and there. Like I would do that. So it's uh, that's one of the perks of uh, drawing digitally because uh, nothing's too late to change. You can change pretty much anything anytime, okay. But now I have a refined drawing. I'm gonna turn this into like a blue pencil drawing so that I can trace over it. So let's. 
And so the, the way I achieve that effect is I will select all of the layers of the rough sketch and then do a control G. And now I group them into one layer. So I'm going to call this rough sketch. Okay, so I renamed the rough sketch. After I renamed it, um, inside this folder, I'm going to add an adjustment layer, a hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay, I'm going to call this blue pencil. Okay, and then I'm going to colorize it and then make it lighter, saturate it, and make it blue. Like this. So now I have like a blue pencil drawing, which is a very good base for me to trace over it. Okay, so in, in manga it's called inking uh, your drawing. Okay, so like all the areas that's like uh, rough, uh, not like uh, very clear, not very defined, like the area here, area there, a uh, little here and, here and there, we're going to solidify all that uh, on a new layer I'm going to call trace. So control shift N, a new layer, I'm going to call it trace. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my uh, pencil brush tool, D, for our pencil brush. Uh, color ultimate pencil hard is what we always use. Uh, so click D to set it back to black and white, uh, foreground color black, background color white. And then uh, I'm probably uh, going to test out a couple of strokes on the face first and see like uh, what size brush I need. So right now I'm at 30. Now 30 probably too thick. I'm going to do 20. 20. Yeah, I think I think 20 will be fine. So I'll be doing uh, 20 brush strokes for the face. And we'll see about uh, the, the body and the rest of the drawing. Okay, we'll get to it. I might increase uh, the brush size on some of the areas. Okay, so but right now let's just uh, start chasing. Now before I go on, <laughs> uh, before I go into speed drawing, uh, I just want to say, hey, if you're enjoying the tutorial so far, you're liking it, you're learning something from me, uh, please uh, like and subscribe uh, to my channel. Uh, you know, that is the bit biggest appreciation I can get from you guys. Okay, that motiv uh, motivates me to uh, make more, more videos and uh, uh, share my uh, drawing techniques and my artworks with you guys. Okay, all right, let's start chasing. Okay, so I'm done tracing the pencil lines, and now all I have to do is the rough sketch layer, the rough sketch folder, I can just turn off the visibility. See, if I turn it off, I now have a very nice and clean line work. Oops, I think I missed a couple of places. So I'm gonna zoom in and just uh, real quickly um, finish tracing these two lines. There are the folds in the cape when it's flying in the wind. Okay, so like my suggestion on how to learn how to better draw uh, clothes folds, clothings, uh, is to learn from the masters. You know, uh, learn from all the greatest manga artists, look at their work. A lot of them have really, really good clothes figure drawing. Uh, so learn from the Naruto artists, learn from the Dragon Ball artists, learn from the One Piece artists. They don't they all have their style of drawing clothes. And by doing uh, traditional exercises on paper and learn how they interpret those folds, you'll be able to create your own. Okay, uh, so next is coloring. Uh, I do have a coloring tutorial on my channel. I'll go ahead and uh, feel free to check it out uh, so you'll have a more detailed explanation of my process. Uh, but for this drawing, I'll just be uh, first adding the silhouette and then define the mid-tone areas and then add shadow, highlight, and rim light. Okay, um, so let's begin with the silhouette. Okay, so now I have the silhouette traced out. All I have to do is um, hit G to go to the bucket tool and click. There you go, the whole silhouette is filled in. Uh, I'm going to change the blending node from normal to multiply, and now I can start uh, coloring all the metal areas. Okay, all right, let's draw. Okay, so now we have all the mid-tone colors colored in, and I can uh, select areas I want and adjust it to color I like, okay? So, I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Okay, so now I've finished adjusting uh, my mid-tone colors. The way I do it, very, very simple. Uh, hit W for the magic wand tool. Okay, and with the magic wand tool, select any area you want to uh, adjust the color to. For example, this red. Just click it. And then uh, do a control H to hide the marquee. Control U to do a hue saturation adjustment. And that is how I adjusted every single color. Okay? Now, if the color you want happens to be on the swatches, uh, you can also just select the color you want and do an Alt backspace. 
Okay, so that is how I uh, adjusted all the metal colors to what I want after I have all the flats colored in. Remember, when you're finished, unhide the marquee and do a Control D to deselect it. Now you can also just Control D to deselect without unhiding the marquee. I know, but I just like to see what I'm hiding first. Uh, I, I just want to see what I deselect first. Okay, uh, so now uh, next we're gonna start adding in, we're roughing in the light, highlight, and shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna rough it in. I'm not gonna smooth out, smooth out, and refine the shadow and highlight. I'm gonna rough it in first. Okay. And I'm gonna keep uh, in mind that my light is gonna come up from the top right down. That's that's gonna be how I'm gonna design this light. Okay. Now there, I made a video called "How to uh, Color uh, Highlight Midtone and Shadow and Rim Light" on my channel. So feel free. Make sure, actually make sure you check that out uh, if you, you ha if you haven't. So I go over in detail how I use this method to color in shadow and highlight in rim light. Okay. But uh, very quickly to start off coloring uh, shadow highlight mid light. No, I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick how I do the shadow. Okay. So I'll do it. Uh, select the midtone. Okay, layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Okay, I'm gonna change the light to lightness to minus 40. Change the saturation to minus 60. Okay, and then control G to create a layer. I'm going to name this shadow. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it again. Select everything, layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. I'm gonna drag it out of that folder on its own layer. Okay, and then for this one, I'm gonna uh, Saturation all the way up, and lightness, I'm going to do a 60. Okay, and then put this in its own folder, and then I'll call this one Highlight. I'm going to duplicate this folder, and call this one Red Light. Okay, so I'm going to uh, add a layer mask to each one of these uh, folders. Okay, and color the layer mask black. There you go, so now I have my Red Light, Highlight, and Shadow layer all set up. Let's start painting. Okay, uh, so I finished roughing in the shadow and highlights. So uh, it's, it's kind of in like a cell shading style right now, uh, but I'm gonna start refining it. I haven't gotten to the rim light yet because I like to do the rim light last. It's very easy, it's just like a trace around the, the, the whole silhouette. Okay, so at this stage, I'm gonna go back to my highlight and shadow masks on the folder and I'm gonna start uh, using a softer brush. Okay, using a softer brush and I start refining the form shadow. Maybe a little bit of cast shadow here and there just because I wanna have like a uniform, a uh, sharp edge. Okay, um, so, but mostly I'm gonna work on the form shadow, okay, and refine the form shadow and make the form shadow look look, look smooth around the form, okay? Like the rough sketch is just kind of like a cell shaded style that uh, uh, I get a general idea of where the light and shadow should fall on, okay? So let's start with refining the shadow and the highlights. Okay, so now we have to refine a uh, shadow and highlight. So see the highlight folder and the shadow folder. I turn off the highlight folder. You see on and off. You see its effect, and then the shadow. Okay. All right. So uh, next is rim light. Rim light is very easy. Uh, doesn't take as much as, as, as long as the highlight and shadow. It's just like a, a light that rounds uh, the the edge of the silhouette in the shadow area. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, so now I have put the rim light in there. Now I, I know uh, they're very, they're not very noticeable, but actually they do have an effect. So see the rim light folder. If I were to turn it off, like these edge around the corners, it wouldn't pop as much. See if I turn off the rim light layer. See that? That little bit of rim light actually makes a difference. Okay. Now last uh, but not least, I'm gonna create another layer uh, called the profile layer. So I'm gonna do a Control Shift N, and I call this profile. Uh, 
Okay, I'm just going to be a regular layer, and I'm just going to go back to my uh, ultimate pencil, uh, Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard, uh, the, uh, back to the pencil brush, and I'm just going to thicken the profile lines. I'm going to hit D uh, to set the color to default, which is black and white, black foreground, white background, and I'm going to thicken up the profile lines. Uh, are, the, are the outermost, outermost border lines of a character, like the head, uh, the, the arm, the legs, Okay, the body, and so on. Okay, so uh, by thickening the profile lines, uh, you're going to be able to read figure even better. And then the thicker profile lines uh, will pop out the figure off the page. Uh, so now, uh, like pattern or facial features, uh, like little holes on the belt buckle and stuff like that, like those will be detail lines. They're not profile lines, okay? So we're only thickening the profile lines. All right, so let me show you what's up. Okay, all right, so after the profile lines, like, uh, if this was drawn on paper, this will be, like, a complete drawing already, but since we're doing it digitally in the computer, so it's one of the other parts of digital illustrations, even when everything is done, you can still make adjustments to the color, you can still make your shadows darker, you can still make your profiles uh, thicker, without affecting any other elements. Cool things, cool thing is, you can even change the color uh, of anything you want. Uh, for example, the red in this drawing, I can go ahead and use my magic wand tool, W, and select all the red in the drawing, do control H to hide it, and do control U uh, to bring up your saturation, and change the color even after the entire drawing is done. Like, if you don't like, if you think your shadow is too light, you can go inside your shadow folder, double click on the hue saturation icon, and make it darker. See, there's so much you can do. You can make so much adjustments even after your drawing is done, okay? So, for example, if I think some other lines, for example, oh, now I said the belt buckle, I mean, the, the belt that's just hanging out, I think it, can, it could use a little bit more profile line. I can go in here, okay? And then thicken that up. Oops. See that? So, the profile line for the belt is thicker. I can thicken up the, sh the line of the shirt. Okay? It's anything that you think can be you know, worked on, you can. All right? So, I'm going to spend about two to three minutes making adjustments a little bit here and there until I'm totally happy with it. Okay? Okay, so this completes our drawing for Baruto. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this drawing tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what we should draw next. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Now remember, drawing is like playing a piano. You can have the best instructor and the best music sheet in front of you. You might even know the music very well. But it is only through practice that you will get better and become what you want to be. The whole point of my video is to provide a side-by-side -side training for you on a daily basis, like riding a bicycle. I might have to hold your bike for you in the beginning, but just keep drawing, and before you know it, you'll be fine. I'll see you next time for more excited drawing.